Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is managing connectors using the configure endpoints feature found in data loss prevention policies. Let's go. So let's talk a little bit about why this episode is important. So much like we talked about last week, and if you haven't seen that video, go ahead and check it out. I'll link it in the description. We talked about directional DLP policies where you can go ahead and enable sub functionalities of a connector. So for example, if you wanted to permit the reading from Active Directory, you could go ahead and do so, but you could then subsequently disable the ability to go ahead and write to Azure Active Directory. And so call that directional DLP because you then can control the flow of information back and forth. So this is kind of in a similar theme to that video in the sense that we want to discuss what are some of the governance capabilities found in the Power Platform. This one is relatively new and is just as important as the directional DLP policies that we talked about last week. So the scenario generally is, okay, I am concerned about say the HTTP connector and I don't want someone to be able to go ahead and connect to just any API out there because they could be, you know, writing data from the organization to that endpoint. Perhaps they're pulling data from an endpoint they shouldn't. Perhaps there's some sort of like compliance angle to this as well. And how can we enable legitimate business scenarios where maybe your organization does have its own API and you do want to allow for the automation of that API using Power Automate, but you don't want to sort of bring in all of the other challenges as a result of enabling HTTP in your DLP policy itself. And so what we can actually do now is filter on specific endpoints that allows us to create permit and deny lists in terms of how we can go ahead and to connect to certain URIs while blocking other URIs. And naturally as part of this, in order to ensure that it's flexible, we can also use wildcards, essentially the star character in many uh, situations in order to allow for more flexibility. So the one challenge I would say is not every connector is going to support this, but I would say a lot of the high priority ones in my mind are covered. So for example, SQL Server, you might have some SQL Server endpoints that you do want to allow for access. Maybe some other ones have like highly sensitive data that you know you, you can't go ahead and connect based upon your organizational policy. And as a result, you can sort of then distinguish these in terms of what people can do and what they can't. Uh, Dataverse is another example, Azure Blob Storage, you know, you might have specific data that is your external website and you just have images there and you want to be able to upload those images and that's cool. But then you might have like some other more sensitive data that you don't want people to access. And as a result, you can restrict that. SMTP, so for sending emails, maybe there's certain mail servers you can connect to and some you can't. And then lastly, probably more importantly, the most important is just really HTTP because that surface area becomes very vast. And so that's what we're going to talk about today in a demo um, itself is we're going to enable the ability to call an endpoint, an API that, you know, is sanctioned by the organization. And then we're going to deny everything else. And so this goes to that whole permit versus block list. Uh, this is essentially how we're going to go ahead and do so. So let's go ahead. Let's dive into a demo and see this in action. Okay. To start with, I'm in the admin center for the Power Platform, so admin.powerplatform.microsoft.com. And in order to modify this, naturally you have to be some sort of administrator. So that could be an environment admin, a Power Platform admin, or a tenant admin. Obviously, depending upon which type of admin you are, your scope will vary as a result. In my case, I'm gonna focus on a DLP policy for just a specific environment. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up this test environment DLP policy that I'm going to go after. Now I've already gone ahead and configured this. I've broken out my connectors into non-business and business connectors. And there, what I can do is you have to enable this on a per connector basis based upon that list I showed you in the slides itself. So let's just go ahead let's just type or search for HTTP. Um, I do need to go into the business data group and then I'll be able to find it. And then here we've got HTTP. And so what we can do is just go ahead and click on the ellipsis here, then click on configure connector and then connector endpoints. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I've done is I've already gone ahead and, and modified this, but what's important here, there's a few concepts. So number one is order, right? It's going to evaluate 
the rules essentially in order based upon priority. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to have our allows first. And in this case, it's a very specific endpoint. So this is an endpoint I have in Azure API management. I've got an API behind it. I want to go ahead and allow it. If I had other APIs I wanted to enable, I would go ahead and add those endpoints and then be able to put them before this deny rule. So I'd go ahead and allow it and then I can sort of organize it how I see fit from that perspective. Now, this next rule is a deny rule and it has just star, that wild card. And so what this is going to do is this is going to go ahead and essentially like block all other APIs that don't conform to this rule. And so this is going to give my administrators a lot of confidence that I can't go ahead and connect to say, you know, some other social media URL or some other commercial or public email service and go ahead and proliferate data from my organization. So obviously these rules can be built out to be much more complex than this, but this will allow solving the requirement of calling a specific API while blocking everything else. So you would just go ahead and make your modifications click save, go ahead and update your policy, and then it should be um, essentially in place right away from that perspective. You could go ahead and then add these rules to like other related connectors. So for now, like this is um, allowing every endpoint, I could go ahead and change it if I wanted. Same thing with SQL or blob storage, SMTP, etc. So let's go ahead now and let's just check out the maker experience and what this looks like from that perspective. Okay, so now I'm in the Power Automate maker portal. And I've gone ahead and added a uh, HTTP action to my canvas and I've called my API. So this is my Azure API management URI. And uh, here I've got my subscription key, which I'm just composing or hard coding here from that perspective. So I should be able to go ahead and save this particular Cloudflow and I should be able to go ahead and run it. And you can see that it, it successfully ran and I've got a, a hello world message coming back here. So that's what I would consider the happy path that is working as we expect it. Now let's go ahead and try to add just another URI here that doesn't belong to our permit list. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a get. And we're just going to go ahead and try to call Bing. Now I'm just going to go ahead and click save here. And then now what we're going to see is we're going to get an error message and it says your flow was saved, but could not be enabled because it conflicts with company data loss prevention policies. And so what that means is if I go back, we're going to find that our flow is currently turned off. I can't turn it on. I'm going to get an error once again. So this allows administrators some comfort knowing that people aren't going to be able to work around this easily. Now, if I go ahead and, delete this step and therefore my Cloudflow is once again compliant, I will be able to save this. Now, one thing to note is my Cloudflow will still be turned off, but I can now go ahead and turn it on and then I can go ahead and run it if I want and life will be good once again. There we can see it succeeded. Hopefully that uh, was a good illustration of how this feature works. It's something really important to be aware of because these are <laughs> these are situations that come up all the time with enterprise customers. They want more control over how their data is flowing. This plus the video I showed last week are great examples of how the Power Platform admin team continues to evolve the service and is listening to feedback from organizations that are asking for these types of features. So do go ahead, do enable this where it makes sense. Do know that your data is protected and that, um, but still enabling people to be productive, which is also uh, super important as well. There's a lot of opportunities for organizations to improve their productivity and reduce manual operation. So you should want to use these features because it gives you the best of both worlds. So thanks again for checking out this video. We'll catch you next week. Um, if you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead and find me at Weirzy. Naturally you're on YouTube already, but go ahead, give me a like, a subscribe, Comments are welcome as well. So thanks again, and we'll see you again soon on the channel. Take care.